Hello, everybody. Welcome. It's wonderful to see you. And um, I want to welcome you to our very first um, holistic wellness meditation session, part of an ongoing series that takes place every uh, fourth Wednesday of the month. So um, I hope you'll be visiting with us again. And just um, a couple of quick notes. I'm sure you had something pop up on your screen to say this session is being recorded as it is. So um, it will primarily record uh, Suzanne, who I'll be introducing in a moment. But in case you wanted to turn your camera off, you're welcome to do that. Um, and I'm very excited to, by the way, my name is Gina. I'm Gina Messina. I'm the executive director of the Institute for Women at Ursuline College. And I'm very excited to introduce to you Suzanne Rusnick, um, who will be leading our holistic wellness meditation series. So just to tell you a little bit about Suzanne, Suzanne is the coordinator of mindfulness programs at Connor Whole Health at University Hospitals. And you can also connect with Suzanne on her website at clevelandmindfulness.com, as well as her Facebook page, which is under the same name, Cleveland Mindfulness. So Suzanne, I'm going to turn it over to you. And we're so excited to have you today. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks, Gina. Thanks for having me. I'm really excited about starting this series. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. And I'm hoping to build a nice little community, you know, where we can all meditate together at least once a month. And who knows, maybe more. We'll see what happens. It would be, it's just a very, um, it's a dream I have of mine to have this little community of people who meditates together and support one another in the practice of mindfulness meditation. So you'll see today if you have any interest in, um, in practicing. And what I thought I would like to do is um, just talk a little bit about mindfulness in general, and then we'll do a practice together, okay? Since this is our first time, um, just to give you an idea of what mindfulness is all about. And then, you know, in future dates, we would have a subject that we discuss, you know, that is either part of mindfulness or um, part of bringing mindfulness to your life. And then we will have time for practice as well. Uh, first, I want to tell you a little bit about myself. I am, uh, I have a master's in social work and a master's in education. I was a social worker in my previous life. Um, I am, I am trained in teaching mindfulness based stress reduction or MBSR, which is the most widely used in research around mindfulness. And it's a curriculum that has been in existence now for about 40 years. It originated at the University of Massachusetts Medical School or Medical Center rather with uh, John Kabat-Zinn. I'm also trained in teaching kids K through 12 mindfulness and I'm a certified teacher with the um, International Mindfulness Teachers Association. So uh, that's a little bit about me. I teach classes for Connor uh, at university hospitals and give talks. And then I also give talks and teach classes independently in the community and do some coaching, mindfulness coaching, I shouldn't say. It's not, you know, it's not, I'm not an athletic coach. coach. Let's be very clear about that. <laughs> My strictly mindfulness coaching. Um, so, and you know, for those of you who aren't familiar with mindfulness, I use the description that John Kabat-Zinn uses which is that mindfulness is a way of paying attention to the present moment on purpose, non-judgmentally, which all sounds great. And in fact, it is great, right? And it is, these are all things that we have to, the capacity to do. But the problem is that we're rarely doing them. Most of the time, we are not in the present moment. Most of the time, we are somewhere in the future you know, we're worrying or planning or anticipating, or we're somewhere in the past, remembering, regretting, rehearsing something that's already happened. So very rarely are we actually here in the present moment, even though intellectually we know this is the only moment we have, right? We know we can't live in the future. We know we can't live in the past. 
So the question really becomes then, when is it that we're living our lives if we're not present for the only moment we know we have? And this kind of way that we have of getting lost in what I call the autopilot, that future past thinking, really inhibits our ability to manage our stress and to make conscious choices about what we are thinking and doing. And so we get caught up in this whirlwind or this autopilot and we're not making those conscious choices. We're sort of being dragged around by our shiny objects, right? Rather they're, whether they're in our minds or outside of ourselves, they are distracting us from the present moment. So with mindfulness, it's really a training. We're really training ourselves in um, paying attention and then a higher quality of awareness as well. So we're learning to choose what we pay attention to and we're learning to become much more aware of what's actually happening from moment to moment. We can't make choices about how to respond to a, any given situation, whether it's inside us or outside us, if we're not aware of it, right? If we're not aware of it, that means we're just reacting out of habit or reactivity, right? Or reflex rather than through thoughtfulness and choice. And that's where we get kind of caught in um, getting ourselves in trouble, if you will. We get ourselves off the path to, from the person that we would like to be, right? From the person that we'd like to see ourselves become or becoming. Because I don't think that we ever become that person, right? It's always a becoming. And so it's this idea of, can I make conscious choices that are going to put me on the path toward that becoming rather than being caught in these automatic reactions that sometimes are gonna pull me off that path and lead me to feel less satisfied, right? Less connected with what I want for myself, less connected with what's really important to me. You know, so we're, we're learning to choose what we pay attention to. And this is so much more powerful than you might think at first sight, you know, it, because what we choose to pay attention to is what we fill our lives with. So it's really quite vital to our sense of well being that we be able to make these conscious choices. So if we're always caught, in sort of this virtual reality of thought, this kind of autopilot that I've been talking about. How then do we train our minds to sort of strengthen those existing capacities that we already have for attention and awareness? Well, in mindfulness, we do, a few, we do practice. And it's sort of a double-edged sword because practice, right? That's great. We all want to practice what's good for us, but it's also time, right? Which none of us has extra of. So it's, it's one of those things that you start to have to give yourself some amount of encouragement toward and some amount of curiosity about so that you will actually try to do this practice because the way that we create a habit is through repetition, right? Any kind of habit. So you might start to notice in your mind, for example, that you have habits of thought, right? Those are those more reflexive kinds of things, ways that we behave in our minds. Those um, parts of the autopilot I was mentioning. So we've created these habits of thought over time through repetition, but that doesn't mean that they're necessarily helpful. Right? That doesn't mean they're necessarily guiding us to that path or keeping us on that path that I mentioned earlier. So if we wanna create a new habit, then we need to practice through repetition, we're forming this new habit, this new way of being, this new way of responding to life as it unfolds from moment to moment. And that's really a key aspect of mindfulness is this moment to moment awareness and response to life. So we're not jumping too far ahead and we're not jumping too far into the, back, into the past. We're really allowing life to unfold one moment at a time. And this is a really helpful and hopeful way of observing life because 
If we think about life as unfolding only one moment at a time, this means that in each moment, we have an opportunity to start again. Each moment is an opportunity to start again. So whether that means this moment is an opportunity for me to start meditation, even if yesterday I failed to do it, or this morning I failed to do it, or yesterday or three days ago or whatever it is, I failed to do it. This moment is perhaps my opportunity to do it, to start meditating. If I wasn't kind 20 minutes ago, this moment might be my opportunity to be kind. Is this making sense? So we're not focusing on the past and future so much. We're focusing on the present moment and what is afforded to us in this present moment. Because if we're constantly focusing on the future and the past, then we kind of have blinders on in a sense. We've narrowed our view so that we actually fail to see what is afforded to us in this present moment. We don't see the opportunities that exist in this present moment because we're so focused on the future and the past. So when we talk about training in this kind of awareness and attention, we can do a couple of different things. And one of the formal practices of mindfulness is meditation, right? It is the formal practice of mindfulness. There are a couple of different kinds of meditation within that larger uh, mindfulness meditation category. Um, today, I will teach you a breath meditation. And the breath meditation is a really nice one because as long as you're alive, you always have your breath, right? So you can always use it. You don't need to have special clothing, a special location, nothing. You can always meditate using your breath and it, we use it as an anchor, if you will, for our attention. So it's a training because you're carving out this space and time for yourself where you're focusing on your breath the sensations of your breath in your body, you'll notice your mind wandering because that's normal, right? A lot of people have a misconception about, about meditation, which is that you're supposed to clear your mind of thinking. Well, that's almost, if not entirely impossible because the mind is designed to think, right? That's what it does. What we're learning to do is to pay attention when the mind starts to think. We start to notice that the mind has wandered off from our anchor and we consciously and with patience bring it back again to the anchor. So a lot like lifting weights, your mind wanders, you come back, your mind wanders, you come back. In a sense, it's strength training for the muscle of your attention. Is that making sense? Okay, so you're noticing when your mind wanders, you're coming back patiently and with a non-judgmental awareness. We don't need to judge our minds for wandering. We don't need to judge the thoughts that are showing up. We're just bringing non-judgmental awareness to them, letting them go and coming back. As part of this, you might start to notice the kinds of thoughts that show up. You know, you might start to become more familiar with how your own mind operates because you are carving out this time to sit there with your mind, right? To sit there with your body. How does my mind respond to certain body sensations? How does, my mind, how does my body respond to certain um, mental activities, right? What are the kinds of thoughts that show up most often and how do I respond to those thoughts habitually? So you start to become much more familiar with your own mind and body in this non-judgmental sort of observing space, right? Where you're witnessing what's with what, mm, you're, witnessing what, you're witnessing what's happening rather than engaging with it. Okay, so we learn how to meditate. And then we can bring mindfulness into our lives many times throughout the day in a less formal way. And that sort of entails bringing all of your attention to your senses and what your senses are gathering. Because it's not the, the body doesn't do that sort of future past thinking, right? The body isn't the thing that's lost in the virtual reality. The body is always in the present moment. So we can really use it to help us ground in the present moment at any time. And our senses are the gateway to our body, right? So if I was washing my hands, for example, 
I might just notice that my mind is lost in thought and see if I can let it go without judging and coming into feeling the temperature of the water, hearing the sound of the water in the sink. My mind wanders pretty quickly off into thinking. I just notice again with patience, I bring it back to the smell of the soap, what I see in front of me, the feeling of my feet on, on the floor in front of the sink. Does that make sense? So we're using our senses to bring ourselves into the present moment. And I always like to talk about this in terms of my own mental habit of dishwashing around dishwashing because I hate dishwashing. And so I have this very crabby attitude about dishwashing. And so if I wash the dishes with a crabby attitude, this is a mental habit, right, of long standing through repetition. <laughs> and I strengthen it every time I feel that same, you know, crabbiness. Say then when my kids were younger and I would go to the, help them with their homework, I might then take that crabbiness with me to the homework table, right? Through unawareness, through unconsciousness, through lack of choice, right? And if you were to say to me, Suzanne, what is your highest value? What's most meaningful to you? Family is right up there at the top, right? But in this moment, I'm not actually acting on my highest value of family. This isn't the path I would normally choose, but through lack of choice, I'm being crabby with my daughter. And she might interpret this as, I don't want to spend time with her. I'm annoyed with her. I don't want to help her, whatever it might be, right? Again, not my intention, not my choice. And in fact, antithetical to what I'd actually like to be have happening, right? So you can see how this really, um, these unconscious ways of behaving can really impact our ability to make our conscious choices to help us stay on or direct us toward what it is we want to do, what it is we'd like to be, what's most meaningful for us. Does anybody have any thoughts or questions? Beautifully done so far. Oh, wonderful. Well, thank you. I'm happy to hear that. Um, you know, you can always reach out to me through my email should you have questions after, you know, we've met. Um, because sometimes when you sit with this stuff and you maybe even try meditating, you might have questions or thoughts. So I don't know if um, Gina can supply you all with my email address, but I can also um, verbally give it to you right now, which is S U Z C R at S B C Global dot net. S U Z C R at S B C Global dot net. Suzanne, you're also on Facebook and LinkedIn as well, right? Yes, exactly. Yeah. And my Susan, Facebook I went ahead is, and put sorry. that in the chat. I'm oh, sorry. Wonderful. Thank I put you. that in the chat for everyone. That's very helpful. Thank you, Gina. Um, yeah, my uh, Facebook page is, as Gina mentioned, Cleveland Mindfulness. And I post some articles there sometimes or the um, schedule for some meditations I'm guiding or things like that. So it's not a big deal, but it is some way you can reach out to me. Absolutely. Okay. Suzanne, I'm yes. wondering how does what you described relate to the religious practice of meditation? You know, I'm not as familiar with the religious practice of meditation other than the rosary. I was raised Catholic, so I do have familiarity with the rosary and with prayer. Um, but as far as like meditation in terms of the religious practice, I'm not as familiar with it. Um, okay. I, I will say that people who've taken my class who are who talk about having a very strong faith practice, whatever it might be, find that meditation helps them be more open to their faith. And if you're making those conscious choices from moment to moment, you're much more likely to make choices that align you with your faith values. Does that make sense? Yes, thank you. Yes, absolutely. Anybody else? Thoughts, questions? 
Suzanne will also be monitoring the chat. So if people want to put their question in the chat, we'll go ahead and we'll give it to you on a break. Great. Thank you. Sure. All right. Well, so let's give some meditation a shot. Okay. So a lot of times people envision when you meditate, you have to be sitting on the floor cross-legged and you have to have a candle burning or some incense or something. But really I, um, I, I sit in a chair to meditate and most times uh, my students are only having a chair to sit in. So it really doesn't matter where or how you sit as long as you encourage a sense of alertness in yourself, right? A sort of dignity, if you will, to your posture that allows you to bring that into the meditation. So if you're, in a, if you're in a chair, I would encourage you to place your feet flat on the floor, resting your hands on your thighs or in your lap. And then you might bring your back away from the back of the chair, maybe elongate the spine a bit, bringing the shoulders down and back. And then if you'd like to close your eyes, you can do that. Otherwise, just maybe softly gazing at a spot on the floor in front of you and taking a very deep and full breath in, exhaling very slowly, allowing the shoulders to drop a bit more. Breathing in again, very, very deeply into a softened belly and exhaling very slowly, allowing the body to settle. And once more, we'll breathe in as deeply as you feel you can, noticing the sensations of fullness in the body and exhaling very slowly, settling, settling. Breath can return to its natural flow. There's no need to change the way you breathe. Bringing our full awareness now to the places of contact for the feet. The places of contact for the body with whatever you're sitting on. The places of touch for the fingers and the palms. Posture feels alert, but also relaxed. Softening the face, the forehead, the jaw. Softening the belly as well. Feeling it expanding as you breathe in and falling back again as you breathe out. Now becoming aware of the place where the breath is most noticeable for you. That might be the nose. Maybe it's the chest or the belly. Or it might be some combination of those. Gently resting the attention in that place where you feel the breath the most and then observing the sensations of breathing there. Whatever sensations are available to you. From moment to moment. When the mind wanders off and gets pulled into a train of thought, 
Just noticing as soon as you can that that's what's happened. And then patiently guiding the attention back to the sensations of the breath in the body again. Remembering that thinking is normal, it's not a problem. It's the noticing that's the key. No matter how often the mind wanders, try to be patient and bring the attention back over and over again. Allowing things to unfold just as they are. No need to change them or make them any different. Letting go and riding the waves of the breath as it comes and goes. with an encouraging attitude of curiosity and interest, but also one of kindness and patience. Breathing in, aware that you're breathing in. Breathing out, aware that you're breathing out. And when you're ready, opening your eyes. Okay, everybody. Thoughts or questions? Suzanne, how frequently do you do this? You know, more is better. <laughs> um, uh, it's really the dailiness that's most important, not the length of time you spend in practice, because you're trying to create this new way of being. And so if you can do it every day, then you're more likely to make an impact on your own mental habits. Is there a better time of day to do it uh, in the morning or in the evening? You know, it's different for everyone. A lot of people like to do it first thing in the morning before their day gets going. Some people like to do it at the end of the day because that's really the only time that, you know, they have. Um, maybe they're not morning people. So it's really different for everyone. Some people find that lunchtime or in their car before they, you know, get out of the car in the driveway and go into their house, depending, you know, it's different for everyone. 
Um, but it does take a little time to sort of figure that out and patience, you know, trying to sort of determine that for yourself. Thank you. Yes. All right, well, does anybody have anything else? Well, I thought it was really interesting. I, I practiced meditation in yoga, uh -huh. but not really just being completely still. And I found just now my mind was all over and then I'd bring it back and then I'd almost fall asleep. Yes. <laughs> like it was like really hard to find just that middle. I was either really busy or just about to fall asleep. Yes. And, and I found that too, when I began meditating, especially because the only time of day I had at that time was the end of the day. So I was extra sleepy. Um, and really it's just one of those things where, you know, it's one more way to train yourself in patience and a bit of perseverance. You know, it's not one of those grit your teeth and bear it kinds of things, but it is a little bit of perseverance where you're being encouraging with yourself and um, seeing if you can sit anyway, even though it's sleepy making at times. And after a while, your mind gets used to that. Oh, we're not closing our eyes and taking these deep breaths in order to go to sleep. We're sitting down to meditate now, you know, because mm -hmm. you're just not used to it yet. I found it to be a very nice experience to share yes. um, doing it, even though we were doing it individually, we were doing it together. And um, I really like that. I agree. I agree. There's just a different quality to meditating in a group, even if it's a virtual group. Um, there's just a different quality to it. I don't know if it's a vibe. I don't know what you would call it, but there's just something about being together and meditating. Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up. Thank you. If you liked today's uh, event, um, we're also hosting this once a month, uh, the fourth week uh, fourth uh, Wednesday of every month, and Suzanne will be back each month through the month of, or through the year, and uh, she'll be bringing us more techniques uh, for meditation. I've also posted information about Ursuline College's Institute for Women, Wellness, and Work. Uh, we're the host of this event, and uh, we have a lot of other um, material out on our website, and you can subscribe to our website for $27. Uh, that's an annual subscription. So if you subscribe today, you'd be good through um, uh, the same time in January of 2023. And like I said, there's a lot of uh, events like this and other types of events uh, we will be hosting throughout the year. All right. Well, thank you all so much for being here and for meditating with me. I really appreciated it. And hopefully I'll see you next month. Suzanne, thank you so much. Thank you.